Today we'd like to talk to you about damping in elastomeric products. An elastomeric spring has another characteristic that a simple steel spring does not. It has hysteresis damping C. When an elastomeric material is deflected, some energy is converted to heat. Without damping, a spring mass system will continue to oscillate at its resonance frequency for a long time after the input has stopped. With damping, the oscillations decay more quickly. Damping also has an effect on transmissibility, which will we discuss. Here's the effect of changing spring damping constant C on transmissibility. This is a typical transmissibility curve for natural rubber, which shows is shown by the black line. This is a damping factor that has a resonant condition of 10. The next line is a blue line that is more damping, somewhere above 0.1 to 0.25. As an example, it has a resonant condition of 0.5. The red line is a silicone type of material that has more damping, somewhere above 0.5 to 0.7. As you can see on the curve, damping has an effect in low disturbing frequency range from 1 to 10 hertz, where it helps control resonant motion of the system. Once you increase your disturbing frequency above 10 or 20 hertz, the isolation efficiency of the mounting system doesn't suffer due to the effects of damping in the elastomeric product. I'd like to demonstrate the difference between a highly damped elastomer and a natural rubber elastomer. These are golf balls that we made in a single cavity mold, silicone, natural rubber. The silicone is very highly damped. It's going to have a very low rebound. It doesn't bounce. This is natural rubber. It bounces quite high. When you compare the two, you can see the difference. The silicone is very highly damped. It absorbs the energy. And if I drop this enough times fast enough, the ball would get warm. So it generates that energy into heat. That's what happens when you use silicone in an elastomeric mount and it's very highly damped, it's going to generate heat. So that's another design consideration you need to take into account when you're using silicone. Some of the common terms for damping are eta or loss factor, tan delta, which we measure here at Lord Corporation, C over C sub C, which is the fraction of critical damping. That would be one half of our tan delta number that we use here and zeta. These are common terms for damping. How is damping measured? In order to design elastomeric springs with desired stiffnesses, we must know the static and dynamic stiffness characteristics of the elastomer. Elastic shear modulus G is the ratio of stress to train. It is a measure of stiffness independent of geometry similar to Young's modulus E, which is a tension modulus commonly used to describe metals. Shear static modulus G is measured at very slow rates of strain. When elastomers are sheared more quickly, there is a time lag or phase angle between the deflection and the resulting force. Dynamic shear modulus G star can be described as a complex number with an elastic shear modulus G prime component and a damping shear modulus G double prime component and a phase angle. The ratio of the damping modulus to the elastic modulus or tan delta is also called the loss factor. The transmissibility of the rubber spring at resonance is approximately equal to the inverse of the loss factor. 